In this video, I want to provide an example of how weighted least squares works because I'm aware in the last few videos we have got quite theoretical in terms of weighted least squares. And the example which I wanted to go into here is that of the relationship between an individual's level of wages and, let's say, the number of years of education which that individual chooses. And if we were to draw a sort of a graph of these two variables against one another, then if we sort of have wages on the y-axis and the number of years of education which an individual chooses on the x-axis, then we might expect that there is some sort of positive relationship between these two variables. And that's not to say that this relationship is necessarily causative, just to say that there is some sort of positive relationship between these two variables. Um, and you can sort of think about as an individual has a higher level of education, then they can apply for sort of better paid jobs. So that's why you might expect that there's a positive relationship between the number of years of education and the wages which an individual actually achieves. But something else is also evident from this pattern, namely that as an individual's level of education increases in terms of the number of years which that individual spends in education, then there is a higher variability of an individual's level of wages. And we can sort of think about that in terms of an individual who has a higher level of education has a higher number of choices for which they um, can pursue employment. So an individual who has, let's say, 15 years worth of education could choose to become an investment banker. So this individual here is earning significantly more than the average. Whereas when an individual is sort of equally qualified in terms of the number of years of education, an individual might choose to go and, let's say, work in an NGO. So that individual, although they've got the same level of education as an investment banker, they have gone and chosen to work in essentially the third sector. So they're getting paid significantly less than an investment banker. And this sort of degree of choices which an individual who is more qualified in terms of education has is significantly more than an individual who, let's say, only has, let's say, five years worth of education. They're pretty much guaranteed there, um, unless they start their own business, if they go and work for someone else, they're going to be earning around minimum wage, at least to start. So there's sort of an intuitive reason for having heteroscedasticity in this relationship here between education and wages. OK, so let's think about how weighted least squares and ordinary least squares think about this situation, because essentially what we're trying to do is we've got some sort of population and we only have a sample from that population. And based on some sort of statistical tool which we're going to use this sample as sort of an input to that, we're going to then try and estimate something about the population. Namely, in this particular circumstance, when we've just got two variables, we're trying to estimate alpha and beta in a sort of relationship which looks something like wage is equal to alpha plus beta times the number of years of education. So this is just a straight line graph where alpha is the y-intercept and beta is the slope of the graph. So essentially what we're trying to do here in this bivariate relationship is we're trying to fit a straight line which represents best the sort of average effect of education on wages. So first of all, considering ordinary least squares, what ordinary least squares tries to do is it treats all deviations of points from the line equally. And in, in other words, it doesn't depend on an individual's level of education. So what it will try to do is if we sort of think about how ordinary least squares treats this sort of anomalous point up here, it will try to minimise the distance of the fitted line from that point as well as all other points. So perhaps the fitted line might look something like that, whereby the, the fitted line has deliberately sort of been skewed quite upwards towards this anomalous point here. So this is the line which ordinary least squares might fit between representing the average relationship between an individual's level of education and an individual's level of wages. Let's think about how weighted least squares treats the situation though. What weighted least squares does is it realises that as an individual's level of education increases, there is a higher variability in terms of the level of wages which that individual can expect. So actually, it doesn't treat this anomalous point up here as equal to a deviation that was, let's say, down here when education was lower. So it actually provides less weight to this point because it's in a region of higher variability. And because of that, essentially the line which we will fit with weighted least squares 
will be that much further away from that anomalous point. So perhaps the weighted least squares line might look something like that. So essentially you can see here that weighted least squares, by taking this extra information into account about the degree of heteroscedasticity across education, weighted least squares, in at least this situation, has tended to fit a line which is much more sort of robust to the presence of outliers essentially, or is much, much, is much, much more indicative of the actual relationship between education and wages than least squares.